And we've got Lucy Marcus, who is the seasoned venture capitalist I mentioned at the top with a bit of a tongue twister okay. there, the secrets of startup success. Um, you're a venture capitalist and you also adv advise on sort of the, 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 the governance, I guess, of um, investing through venture capitalists. But w what are the secrets? What do you look for when, you know, someone turns up with, you know, a sheet of paper and some scribble and says, can I have $2 million for my startup? Within that, what are you looking for? Well, our fund actually, for the most part, invests in biotech. But I think fundamentally, as you look across the board at what people need to invest in and how they're looking at things, we're looking for real stuff. I mean, there was a time, you know, sort of 10 years ago, dot-com time and so on, where you were happy to get something that was, a, you know, a page or two. And, you know, these guys seem like good guys, and they're mostly guys. And, um, and you sort of think, oh, yeah, that, that seems fine. They, they seem smart and so on. That's really not sufficient anymore. I mean, you know, limited partners and who are investing in funds are, are risk averse, and you need to be able to prove that you've actually done your math. You've got to show your math to show why you've decided to take this investment, and also you need to be able to bring some comfort to everyone around you. And, and so it's really not sufficient to just take it on a piece of paper. So, you know, I look for a team that actually feels solid. Um, that actually understands the market isn't all hyperbole. I mean, I'm not really interested in, you know, if we have 10% of the largest market in the world, that's a really big market. So I want to know how you're going to get it. I want to know what you're going to do with it. I want to understand the steps that you're going to take. And I also look for, from my perspective, I, I you know, I, I sit here with a couple of hats on. As you say, I, I do a lot of work on um, boards and, and good boards and what boards look like. And I like to see, you know, early stage ventures with a decent board and not just with a venture capitalist on the board and a couple of the founders. But I think it's actually important to have um, independent board members on, on early stage boards. So, and how early um, are you looking at these companies for the most part? Well, we're looking quite early, actually. Okay. Um, American, quite early, so very early. And, um, you know, we're sort of after the notional stage. Um, we tend to look at them, you know, when they've got a good, strong idea. Maybe they've done a little bit of research and so on. It's actually a tricky time uh, because. Um, especially in biotech, that's a high risk time. But we get to know the companies very well before we invest in them. You know, we live with them. They, you know, we work with them. Um, we actually insist on having a, uh, one of our directors on on the on the board. Okay. Um, but again, you know, we're venture capitalists sitting on their board. I don't think that's sufficient. You said that wasn't sufficient. So, what do you like to see? Should if if someone came to you and said, "Look, I, I have this this idea, and we've been we've been working on on this a bit, and I have a board of advisors who are not." connected to the company, would that impress you greatly? I think it, when, you, when you talk about a board of advisors, I mean, you know, you can have a, a list of people on a piece of paper. That doesn't actually impress me greatly at all because, you know, a lot of names, some people don't even know that their name is on that list. Okay. It's actually how they use them. I mean, a board is there uh, in the best circumstance to be used properly and actually to add value. So, you know, when I'm sitting on the board as a venture capitalist, I've got something particular in mind. You know, I, I want to make sure that my investment is secure, um, and 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 I want to make sure that the company is doing well. But also, I, I have a path in mind. The founder will have a certain path in mind, and actually, those paths don't always mix. And so, I do think that it's important to have someone who's not an investor who has some expertise in the area in which you're working, or actually understands how to do some of the things that somebody in the company might not know how to do, the accounting or something. Thing, and actually sits in there and is actually only thinking about and loving the company. They don't love the founder, they don't love the venture capital, all they care about is the idea, where it can go, and they actually act as a buffer and also as an instigator and a thought provoker to actually do, make sure that the, the tactical stuff is done, but also the strategic stuff is done, the sort of grounding stuff and the stargazing stuff. And the important thing as well is that if you've got a venture capitalist who feels one way and you've got a founder who feels another way, you need somebody to help adjudicate that. You can't just have them butting heads all the time because in the end the venture capitalists will often win because they've got all the money. Right. Is there some um, specific, even within biotech area that you're looking at right now? Our fund looks at, uh, at uh, for the most part, just biotech in general. We look at some devices. We look at um, a lot of pharma stuff, mm -hmm. um, and you know it sits within an incubator. And so, because we live with the companies, we get to know them, and so we manage the risk a lot more than if they were just sort of random companies. And then we also, you know, we see them over time. You know, we, we get to know them really well. We can keep an eye on things and and help them out if they need to. And then we've actually the way we've structured the fund is we have a, a panel of investors. Um, so a panel that we bring together of experts. So they're not 
part of the fund, but they are people who help us to evaluate these things because the stuff that's coming through the door is like nothing you've ever seen before. I mean, it is so complex mm -hmm. um, and so extraordinary that no one person, I mean, even if you had done uh, your PhD a couple of years ago and, you know, you, and, and we see a lot of venture capitalists in this area who you know, they have biology degrees or physics degrees, the stuff that we're seeing, it, it doesn't fall into any particular character, uh, ca uh, ca category. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's extraordinary, but it takes a team of people to be able to evaluate some of this stuff. Okay. But it's very exciting. I'm looking at to Silicon Valley, which is a little outside your, your, your core expertise. We're, we're seeing a, um, a a lot of startups come, which I look at and I have and I see doubtful business models, unsustainable perhaps. And particularly, I know Groupon, which seems to, to have this you know this weird situation where I think that anyone could set up a coupon company like Jen and I could set up one tomorrow and it I'm wouldn't sure be, it would be great. I'm sure it could be great. <laughs> Does it worry you that companies um, like that with no moat around them, and obviously biotech has a moat because you have patents, um, d does it worry you when you see that in Silicon Valley or is it not? Well, my worries about Silicon Valley are slightly different than that. I mean, I think actually, you know, Companies need to think much more about who their customer is, and they have to live with their customer. So the technology set of things you can get there, but actually, I want to see them thinking more about how their customers operate and who their customers are. And so, what worries me sometimes is it feels as if they're almost living in a bubble where they're talking to each other. So, so things sound really good and look really good to each other, right. but actually. You know, and again, on the boards of companies there, you've got everybody knows everybody else, they're all friends with everybody else. Where's the international perspective? You know, where's the customer perspective? Where's the not Silicon Valley or money perspective? Is, is that like you said when, when you're all talking together and the idea, you know, you're all talking with each other inside a bubble, it's like when you're at the pub and you're saying, oh, that's a great idea, and you have a few drinks, exactly. and it just sounds better and better the more drinks <laughs> the you more have. Drink. The more you drink. This is a fantastic no, I love idea. You. <laughs> right, okay, that's what yeah. you're saying. So yeah. maybe, hey, that's a message for Silicon Valley from Lucy Marcus. <laughs> Widen out. Thank Come you. on out. Come on out. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lucy Marcus, um, venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate your, your time to today. Great.